Hey everybody, this is Dave Cooper, DaveCooper.live, and today is an exciting day. In the world of offsite construction, one of the big things that's truly starting to take place as we grow and grow and grow is we are having architects that are coming into our space looking to better how they build and do things differently and be on the cutting edge. And today, I am so lucky and privileged. I mean, we have George Garcia and Peter Stromberg from Garcia Stromberg Architects on. Guys, thank you so much. Thank you. Good to be here. It's thank great you. To have My pleasure. You. All right, for the George, invite. I don't care which one of you. Tell, tell me a little bit about Garcia Stromberg and let, let's kind of kick this off with a little bit of history because you guys are doing amazing stuff around the world and it's just absolutely amazing that offsite's in your radar. And I, I'm so grateful to have you here. Well, Kick it. Um, I'll start it off and, and then um, Peter can, can jump right into it, which is basically how it happened. I started it off and Peter jumped on it pretty quickly. <laughs> uh, that's sort of in the story of Garcia Stromberg back in uh, 87. Um, uh, I started a one man show uh, coming back, coming from a, a, um, a background, a very intellectual background, if you will, from the University of Miami School of Architecture. and. I, by, by, um, by hook and by crook, ended up uh, um, a, with a series of, of experiences of large organizations, small organizations, um, and interestingly enough, ended up uh, uh, heading up a large uh, development company in Florida. And um, eventually, back in, in 87, it, it ran its course. The chairman of the company um, passed away and... Uh, the, the the rest of the family took over and it was my opportunity having come from all the uh, the experiences that I thought I needed was like I said large organizations small organizations uh, development side of things and so on and got a pretty well-rounded uh, view of life in this space and started uh, decided to go and start my own organization back in like I said in 1987 August to be exact shortly thereafter as I started to um, um, evolve and having met many, many people along the way started. One of them that I had met was uh, Peter Stromberg's uh, father, uh, who became a friend of mine and he worked for a, an organization down here. And one of the guys who had worked for the organization worked for me. And then they, they told me about uh, Peter studying at the uh, Mississippi State University, came by and uh, we, they, they asked, uh, he asked if, if uh, he'd come work as an intern and one of those things that really, one thing led to another and uh, Peter and I hit it off. He began to work in one summer, uh, uh, and literally I had gotten into the, involved in a development project. Peter was uh, was hired to a, a great position of cleaning up the site every day. Uh, was the best cleanest site in uh, Fort Lauderdale. Then the uh, summer after that he came back and he became an apprentice carpenter on the project which I was the, not only the architect, but right. the, uh, the, the developer, uh, associated developer for. And finally, the year after that, when he was graduating, he says, you think I could uh, maybe come in and work in the air conditioning one day? And uh, we joined forces in the office and little by little uh, evolved. Uh, uh, it was this By this time, it was like 1989, 1990. And right. we've been together ever since. Actually, literally have known each other before we even married our own uh, wives. So... We, 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 we call it a, a, a secondary marriage, if you will, of, of a great partnership. And we've always lived through that philosophy of right. age and diversity and the way we think and so on is what I think that has led our firm. That's sort of the philosophy of our firm. Yeah, love it. Love it. Peter, your, your mic's uh, muted at the moment. Tell, tell, me, uh, tell me, Peter, do you agree with all that? Well, I mean, if you're a, are you a fisherman? I am. Um, I love fishing. Okay, and 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 you know, and and when you go out fishing, when you're with when you were with your grandfather when it was you were young, and you'd go and we, we'd go out to Cape Cod and we we catch little fish. Those fish have gotten really big now as the years go on. You know, forty years later, those stories get larger and larger. <laughs> but uh, the, the 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 gist of everything that George said uh, is is correct, and I think that's what what kind of what kind of brought us together. Um, and, and I think it, when we, when we can talk about other items about, 
uh, about um, uh, offsite type of things, having worked in construction and seeing it from that side and then and being in the studio and having how it affects all of the design decisions that we make, that I make, that in the studio are about buildability and about constructability. And, and, and so as, as George and I sort of met in that realm and then we there was other people involved and partners involved, but through all the years, it ended up you know merging and uh, often to just ourselves because we had the same vision and goal and with his extensive background and with in the, in the development side of things and all the things that go along with that in the municipalities, um, along with design and then coming in and my passion for what I did um, and, and came also, I think I had a guitar strapped to my back. I think one of them is, is hanging up behind me. Um, and, and I think that that's what allowed us to grow because we were so different uh, in, in the studio and as friends, and it's, it's what kind of makes us always challenge everything that we do and every decision we make, whether it's a business decision or design decision in the studio. Yeah. Right, right, right. It continues, it continues to speak to the, the, the why of things and why we have never sat and said, okay, how are we going to structure this? And so on. It, it, it just, that has failed so often. Every time we've tried to structure, we've been as many as 80 something people as right. little as back down to six and then back to 30 something 40 almost right now is, is that it's never been about one goal and one focus it's always been about the diversity i i, I recall right now to give you an example that uh, even though as, as as intellectually driven as we have been from our own educations and and then the construction side and so on peter comes in and i asked him well we got we had we got this project i don't remember how we got it but an example was, and I said, uh, we got to design this multi-story building, which we were probably not qualified to do. And I give Peter, hey, look, this is a sketch of what I think it should be. And so I said, well, you know, it's got to, Peter starts sitting down and drawing. I said, you need to pay attention to the code. And he goes like, oh boy, the code. Well, yeah. So I said, here. And at that time, I remember it was the South Florida building code, a big black notebook. And I gave it to Peter. And I said, you need to really look in there because, and then there's a methodology about how you file right. code. The next morning, literally the next morning, Peter shows up. He was an expert on the South Florida building code, which if you think about that, it's such a tool to be able to design knowing that you know the code. And so, and we, the, 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 the more we, every time we get a chance right. to learn something more about how to do something better because we know how to design economically, we've designed many buildings and I could show you them and, and clients come in. And of course, when they bring in their contractor who says, yeah, but these two boys have been smoking crack, right? Because you can't build that for $250 a square foot. And we tell them, well, I bet you can if you just listen to right. us and let's help us collaborate. And we've accomplished so many buildings of that nature when the first thing the contractor says, oh, no, but I can save you money. Just right. make it a rectangle, put a stair on either end and an elevator in the center. And we tell the client, that's the guy you want to get rid of because yeah, Dave. you want to collaborate. And that's right, the right. way we've done that. We've done that through the years. Yeah. And I, I think I think, George, yeah, showing when we when we look at some projects, showing Monterey would be a great example of creating something a little a little different and, and really working with it w within constraints of budgets, which is, again, another. So you look right. at those things and, and when you have those fixed budgets, then it, then you, get, you, need, you need to make sure you're also getting the quality of yeah, it and sure. the, and in those things as well. Yeah. Well, we're going to we're going to definitely jump into some of these projects. I think people's eyes are going to fall out of their heads when they see what you've built and they probably don't even realize you built it. And they've, a lot of people have stayed in all these. But all right. So, George, you've always taken kind of the role of the vision and, and ideas and stuff. And, and uh, as far as I understand. Right. And Peter, you're the one that that takes all of George's ideas and like you, you like you can just sketch things out on the fly. Both of you. Right. Pretty much. Well, you know, that's interchangeable. Yeah. And, and and I use it as a pride moment because, I mean, everything I've ever learned how to do in terms of drawing and uh, and so on. I mean, I I'm always I'm the jealous one. You know, I'm the I'm like the, <laughs> the, the, I'm, the, I'm the black sheep of the organization that uh, I can think of things and I can. And then but there's nothing better than to know that you can think of something that somebody else can materialize for right. you. I, I almost think sometimes, boy, as much as I love music, and we've discussed it briefly before, imagine if I could really kind of hum a tune, but people would think that kind of funny, right? But I think Peter could then play it and write it and develop right. it because he's a musician. Well, I think that sometimes I see something, and all I know is all I, I'm driving down the street or I'm down in the keys someplace or whatever, I call Peter. And then I'd say something, I got it, I got it. You know, and then he kind of shuts me down real quickly, and within minutes, we've got 
a yeah. vision that I was only thinking about Peter was doing, or it starts with him too. I mean, it's not like right. Peter waits and sits, waits for me to give him an idea. But I'm saying that if, if there's a thing that we do in tandem very well, is that, and then and then by the time we go back and forth and back and forth, right. and 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 having his hands uh, uh, kind of you know attached to my brain, or there's not what else could you want, right? It's like I wish, yeah. like I said, I wish I could, I wish I could write music. I, I yeah, I, I would view it as a little bit, Dave, a little bit more of a collaboration. I mean, I write music, I, I yeah. paint, uh, right. and I design. I have ideas, um, and right. uh, and that's that's what that's what fosters our relationship is because we throw those ideas back and forth. Um, cause it, when, when designing, I mean, designing is a, is a, is a collaborative effort, but designing is also, it's, it's like writing a song if you were going to create it or, or creating a painting. I mean, it's a very intuitive internal process. Right. Uh, yeah. and then it becomes a, a sort of more global process and it's all about critique and evaluation and growth. And that's and what we'll do is there's a lot of people in the studio that, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll come up with an idea. They'll have a vision for that idea. They'll put it up on the wall and then everybody can get involved in a charrette type of atmosphere. So it's a, it's definitely a little bit more of a collaboration, um, yeah. in, in, in looking at it. We, yeah, we, 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 we evolve so much and we, you have to, excuse quick. me, I have to let a dog out when he's clawing at the door. I'll be right back. <laughs> very quickly. Yeah. Um, very quickly when when we get something to a certain point um it's when it really gets extremely exciting because it goes beyond the, when it goes beyond the idea into something tangible and we have six 3d printers going on at any given moment at the same time printing things at a different scale and so on so that we can visualize it and then on that we start um you know, we'll take an evening and sit down and open a bottle of wine and start talking about the project and no drawings, no nothing, just talking about it and where we want it to go. And if you discuss it long enough, it becomes, like I say, you become what you think about all day long. Well, we think about this for so long that whatever we discuss begins to then manifest itself into uh the, the 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 project or the idea and it doesn't begin i mean we, we laugh when people say that you know the form follows function what a joke that would be in our office we <laughs> we, we we don't know where we don't we don't know what follows what you know there's right. an old statement by i think it was robert venturi says form follows fiasco which is what we think like we we think that sometimes it's we start from a a, a vision sometimes we literally let a building uh, be dictated to by its environment, by the site, by the location, by the budget. By uh, so we don't know what's going to be the prioritized criteria. Sometimes and the so, concept comes after. Sometimes the concept comes after the design. Um, <laughs> well, that's yeah. that's kind of the whole idea, though, of of a partnership. I mean, the collaboration. If you guys did exactly the same things together at the same time. You wouldn't be where you are today. It's it's that idea sharing and it's that creativeness that that works so well. And to be partners for as long as you guys have been partners and for the size projects that you guys have worked on, I mean that's a testament to to you both on how well you work. And even just having this conversation, you can tell you guys like to have a lot of fun. Well, we 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 are also not afraid to discard a concept, which is one of the most difficult lessons to learn. You you go you work so hard. And Peter has done it to me a couple of times that where I said, come on, really, we go a great distance and we, I mean, it's, it's pretty much done. All we got to do is now prepare the presentation to take it to the Cayman Islands and I won't name the project. And we're like through and we start talking about it and I know where we're headed. We're about to trash the whole thing. <laughs> and, and, and you can't be afraid to do that because all right. of a sudden that, that, that all of a new idea begins to formulate because of the last one. It's like, okay, and then we right. scrap it, put it in the trash can, and start over again. You can't be afraid to do that. And uh, sometimes we don't tell a client that the, what the previous iterations were because they would probably they might like the other ones better. So we don't give them that chance. We don't de we don't design by multiple choice either. Right, right, right. I love it. I love it. So, all right, offsite construction. Let let's let's talk about design for manufacturing, right? This is one of the things that that is is so awesome about having you on is you and your team are really starting to put a lot of thought and effort in training. I mean, you've spent a lot of time training yourselves and understanding and I, I, training is maybe not the right word, but educating yourselves. And, and, and this is how we kind of gotten together because of this. 
tell, tell us a little bit about where your mindset is moving towards offsite construction, volumetric building. You want me to jump in, George, or you want to? Yeah, go ahead, please, Peter. Well, I, it, it really becomes, and I think as we're, we're talking about early on, it really it, it becomes inherent in our thinking because one one is the is the end product, and especially in all of the the project types that we you know have the fortune to work on, it's all about that. I mean, you walk through a high end custom home, you walk through a high end resort, you walk through a high end condo, um, and 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 residence, and you need to understand. I mean, that it it feels good, it feels right, the materials are connected properly, the tolerances are 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 unbelievable and, and and that's what people when they it's it's interesting with you know with the, the the pandemic that we're going through right now and people and and you see the desire for people to get back out into 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 places and and a lot of that reason we find from an architectural standpoint is that we get to provide this sort of you know the the sort of area that and that uh um, that that area that, that, that they're dwelling within, whether it's having a cocktail, whether it's having dinner, or whether it's uh, going to sleep. And so the, the, the offsite component allows us to not, not take away sort of what is the industry standard of, because there are certain things in the industry, and we've had people through the years and friends that have tried to design things or patent things to change the way so that, that the industry is working. But it, it, the old dog, new trick thing is always there. Um, and so when, when you think about offsite construction, we look at it as, and George, you know, when, when he mentioned earlier, the, uh, the project like the Boca Beach Club, is we took a building that was 25 years old and we gutted it. And we gutted it down to the core shell so it was just raw concrete. I mean, that project could not have been more ideal because not only from a timing factor, a standpoint, but a cost factor, which time is money in these, and the sooner you get that hotel open. So we, we, we feel that offsite allows spaces to just feel even sometimes, I mean, there's, there's, there's beautiful builders that, that can do some amazing stuff, but a lot of times when you get into the larger yeah. builders and you get into resorts, your, your, your labor pool is not as qualified. And that, it's, it's nothing to say that the, the people just haven't been trained to, you know, to do that. And so you lose that quality in some of those spaces. Sure, sure, for sure. Well, why don't, why don't, we, why don't we jump into a little bit about what you guys are so good at? And I'll pull this up on the screen and let's talk about some of the projects that even in your your own mind, looking back on it, that would be ideal for offsite construction. Sure. All right. I mean, look at this. Like, it's not just one or two. It's 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 full pages of projects. So tell me where you guys would like to start. Well, per, I think um, what we could do is start if, if we look at on the upper right, which is the Boca Beach Club. So yeah. to, to, to give you an indication that this project was originally designed, it was an Arvita project, a building that was on the site. It was brought over from a developer from a building that was in Hawaii and they just plopped it on. So we had nothing to do with the organization of that sort of long uh, S shaped building on the site. And there was a lot of opportunities missed because they had taken a project like that. So we had the opportunity to completely gut this project. And and when designing the rooms um, and, and designing the restaurants and a lot of these spaces, and you can just kind of look at the at the materials in here. And, you know, to talk about offsite, I mean, you look at things like that, that you're looking at, I mean, that's a completely prefabricated offsite panel that comes in, but it, wow. it's, it's inherently part of the architecture. I mean, it becomes, and in these rooms right here, just even the way that you could plug and play in here, and get that, uh, you know, that the quality of some of these spaces and layers. And even in the design, you can see how we've layered things. So it could be components that almost interlock and you could get this easily. This was not, this was originally designed to be something. And this was 15 years ago, originally designed to be that, but it, it ended up not going that route. And, but the, there was a very good contractor on it that built it and the, the quality ended up uh, very, very, very well. But it, it, this building, along with the one next to it, that's just to the south, and we can talk about that one, Dave. Just from a from a standpoint, like this is a 400 room hotel that works great. And then if you go to if you go to the project that's that uh, on the bottom, the second one from the left, um, either one of those, uh, because that's actually an internal residence that we did, and then the building is over on the left uh, side. Um, and these these buildings uh, again, they become components of of beautiful kitchens and bathrooms and and, yeah. and, and, and built-ins that end up plugging into a framework. So I think I mean our our interest really lies within taking the what is the industry of building a shell of a building and and, and using those trades to, to to lock things in, but bringing things and you can see how many things in this room right here alone could actually have been you know fabricated <laughs> off-site and brought in. Yeah, it's it's 
it's important uh, to note when, when speaking of these, uh, as, as, as much as you see this tremendous diversity in these, in these uh, buildings, um, you would think, okay, well, what, I don't know about the candidate, uh, the, this being a candidate for the offsite construction and so on. Well, one of the things that we are capable of doing as we design, and we talked a little bit about it, touched on it, on, on a, the ability to get things built for a certain budget and so on, we are aware of the development side, which makes us, uh, the other day somebody introduced us as developer friendly. That guy was kind of, uh, I don't know if it was a compliment or not, but uh, the, the reason we, we would be labeled as developer friendly is because we understand the, the nature of uh, working within a, a, uh, a budget constraint. And one of the things that we've been able to do is as much as a building looks like it's absolutely a randomly put together uh, kit of parts is we know that we can make every component uh, within, say, the wet areas, which are the most expensive square footages. We 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 know how to fit them in so that the unit that is twelve hundred square feet and then the twenty two hundred and then the thirty three hundred square foot they basically have the same components in the wet areas of bathrooms and kitchens just possibly a little bit larger or another right. module bigger. And we think in modular senses so that when the developer goes out and or the contractor is going out and doing the buyout, they, that's where the economy of scale comes in that as much as complex as that building looks like, if you were to really dissect it and we do it tremendously well now with the world of, of three-dimensional printing and Revit and everything else that we use, right. we're able to, to, to make the building the, the, the architecture of the building, there's certain, there's, certain, there's certain essentials that are in the building that, that, that can walk and talk like the same in every unit. And then the building takes its ev eventual flamboyance, if you will, from all the other creative functions that we, 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 uh, we attach to it. Therefore, there's where we get our economy, where you can build a building where we sat before that a contractor has said, you'll never be able to build that for X number of dollars a square foot. And we say, oh, I bet you're wrong. And this is why. And then we walk them through it. They just have to be participants. And in the world of design anymore, in our architectural world, design and construction are not two separate things. Right. Design and construction are one in the same. We are designing until the cocktail party at the opening. And the, and the contractors, as much of our design team, is that we'd like to be part of the construction team. That's yeah. something that it's a must for us to achieve some of the things that right. you see that we've been able to achieve. Yeah. Well, you hit you hit on something that that's really important. You know, one of the things that is happening in offsite construction is this hybrid approach to construction. You mentioned bathrooms. You mentioned you know kitchens, whatever. There there are there are manufacturers and offsite uh, facilities that are focusing just on that bathroom pods, mm -hmm. right? Whole whole pods for the hotel room or whatever you want to call them. So this hybrid approach between taking modular and volumetric adding some of these pods and then taking panelization and steel and other components and mixing them together to get a project to fruition much faster, right? Uh, less time on site and still give you the same beautiful aesthetics that you're looking for. And that's, that's what's happening. There's a big change happening in this realm. And you guys are already thinking that way. It's, it's, um, and, and quality control for us is so crucial because like, you know, the, the right yeah. God is in the details, but that's, that, that's, that's not necessarily untrue. We, and we believe that, uh, you know, that, that, in, that, that, the, that the detail does eventually get it done. And then when we found out and we saw with our own eyes, what you are able to do in a controlled environment where somebody's yeah. not throwing mud set around and the, the electrician is not tripping over the sprinkler guy and, and and we can literally, uh, you know, it's almost like uh, uh, like the, we said. Wait a second. We started thinking a little bit differently, and I think Peter said it to me once. He said, "My gosh, they've been building cars this way since the Model T. Right. Why are we still throwing up blocks to build a building?" And, and we wonder why the buildings leak, but the cars don't. You know? Right, right, <laughs> right. I mean, it, it, it's it's amazing that we. And then we said, "Holy Toledo." But and then but then you you speak to the client world and you speak to the construction world. I, I had recently I was able to lecture at a I think it was a contractors association of South Florida, and here I am not having done we haven't done a big portfolio of prefabricated buildings, and I'm telling them that you guys better wake up because 
the way you're building today, you're not going to do it anymore. You should learn how to, like we're learning how to design to that uh, music. You better learn how to build to that music and help us in design building. You know, the, the, the days of going out and, you know, here's a set of plans and let's take the lowest bidder and go do it and stuff. That's done. We're done. It's not going to yeah. happen. We don't, uh, uh, even, even, even drawings and rolls of plans. Every day there's a lesser number of rolls right. of plans in our office. Everybody walks around and go to the site with the iPad and we mark it up there on the blue beam and the other stuff. And, and, and working remotely has allowed us to uh, sort of certify to the fact that you can do that. Nevertheless, I must stand up for the fact that we have also come to terms that we still enjoy getting together, having a good glass of wine and designing buildings together here at the office. But but yeah, sure. No longer the role of set of plans. I don't know. Uh, all, all my wine disappeared when I was out of the office for a few Peter weeks. Peter was out a few days <laughs> last week. And I came back and said, what happened to the wine? He said, there was a lot of designing taking place here. Right, uh, right, right. right. Well, let's 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 take a look at some of these other projects as well, because you guys are really big in the hospitality multifamily space, and and it just really lends itself to what you do offsite construction, and and the fact that 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 you guys are so interested in this is a is a real uh, is is a beautiful thing because I'm going to tell you why. We need more creative people architects such as yourself that have that creativity, that design mentality to aesthetically build something beautiful. And that's why I want to show some more of these projects because I think it's so important that the world knows that, you know, an architectural firm such as yourself that has done some of the most elaborate, most beautiful designs for resorts and, ho you know, hotels, hospitality, uh, multifamily and single family, uh, it, 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 it's a powerful thing and, it, and, it, and it's a big statement for what's happening in offsite construction. And you guys are on the leading edge of uh, coming into this. And I think that's brilliant. So let's, let's hop into some, uh, some other, some other projects if you want. All right. Sure. I think a good one is probably the second one from the left on the top, which is Adagio. So now you're, you, you know, you're, you're, you're going into a project that is based on an, And the reason it's at a project like this would work so well with it is we you're it's simple modules this entire project and so but the idea and i think dave you were just touching base on that was to kind of break from what otherwise might be very orthogonal right. and very rigid um and with this building you can see how it's broken into those modules and all we did was shift them back and forth in these planes um and it should yeah it should have the little arrow on the left and it should shift through um and for even and from the okay so now you look at this 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 level this, this shot right here so now you've got a parking level. And what we did is we basically designed these patterns and these repeating patterns on that on that facade and, and they were easily cut. Right. And the whole thing was we, we were able to save a tremendous amount of money by making this into a predator pattern pattern. And, and Roger in our office sort of designed this pattern. And then we just just by flipping it and moving it, it becomes this continuous element to screen right. the garage, but becomes kind of a work of art. And again, a, a very prefab. We, we we uh, I'm going to interrupt you just for a moment, Peter. Please, because please. This was one of those the collaborative efforts between our, myself, Peter and, and, and Roger and our firm, uh, who was uh, one of the, our, our, the biggest player here is, um, we were looking for a way to screen the garage of this building. And we kept thinking, you know, the same damn louvers and the same damn lights, and you're going to see them at night and so on. Right. I was down in the Keys with my family. I said, Peter, take a look at this. I, and I said, took a picture and sent it to Peter. I said, look at me, imagine imagine something like the mangrove roots or something like very, a little free form organic and so on. Peter said, you know what, like I said, I got it. So so Peter then takes it and he designs this absolutely beautiful, beautiful, uh, um, right. well, as you see it, uh, mangrove root system of, uh, of, of, of screening uh, and becomes a mural instead of a, a louver on, to cover the garage. Man, it was just absolutely great. Of course, we start on the pricing exercise and it's uh, uh, over a million dollars for this, just for the facade of this thing. And of course, the client said, uh, listen, fellas, let's go back to the louvers from the catalog, okay? Right. We're not gonna do that. Well, 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 just just wait a second. What if we were able to design this so it would be a repetitive pattern, but you can't tell it's a repetitive pattern. So Roger takes over and Roger starts putting it into a repetitive panel that we get it to the point and then we 3D printed the thing, get it over to some guy who doesn't believe, believe it can't be done, right? You gotta get your eagles too. You can't let your ducks do the work. 
and 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 the guy in Miami puts it together. Bottom line, it was three hundred and fifty thousand dollars to do the same deal that that you know that we that we couldn't do for a million dollars on another matter so that's sort of like the way we believe in uh on, in our uh, ability to use technology and prefabrication it was uh, they were all they went straight from our system to their jigs they 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 laser cut them out of aluminum finished them sent them out to the site plugged yeah. them in period well, you know what that that's it i mean that's we call that in our world of off-site value engineering right i mean yeah. that's a six hundred and fifty thousand dollar savings by thinking a little bit differently and that's 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 incredible that's a big savings but you're right it's you just got to think of things differently yeah and by the way it's 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 like it's built i mean uh, the, yeah. nobody could believe it it's built so sorry peter i interrupted because that's one no, of no. the no, it's examples that's that's a great example of how that that collaboration through the entire studio yeah. Uh, and, and and that input and you and you create spaces. If you look at these at this building, I mean, this is one day where right. even even addition because now you're talking about a, a really good economy of scale. And if you did these units and and say you have 30 units, but each of those units has three bays and you got a hundred bays right there, right. Uh, and you're just plugging and playing. And literally, you could do the entire module where you design the slabs a little bit different, uh, and you design the module to be able to just slid right in. And you could do it. The building is deep; it could actually be locked in from both sides, and and you you right. could have really kind of prefabricated the whole building. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, you can really see what you guys did on that parking garage from this angle. It, it, it does not look like a parking garage. It just looks like a beautiful piece of artwork. At night, if you go take a cruise down the Intracoastal, which is where this shot is taken from, you don't even want to look at the building. All you want to look at is the, the lit mural, which is the garage. Right, right. It's, it's a nice building. would have thought a parking garage could be beautiful. And 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 Dave, you know the interesting thing too in in these communities, and you look at the you look at the level and the height of palm trees, uh, and 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 that what George was mentioning this sort of idea of the mangroves, and you do create it at nighttime, just a, a very organic feel, and then the building is right. sort of growing from up above it, yeah. and these yeah, are the spaces sure. along the along the water, um, uh, in creating that you can see it up there, and then we incorporated some again prefabricated sun grills with this this uh, organic type of system as well. Yeah, for sure. I mean, absolutely gorgeous, guys. Absolutely gorgeous. So Thank you. that building has a, a pool on the roof, which is a, yeah, a, almost, a almost a forced trick we learned while working 14 years in Panama is that don't ever waste a roof. <laughs> don't ever waste a roof. <laughs> don't ever waste a roof. <laughs> and if you go back, uh, that's, a day that's, a roof. So that's a roof. That's of that the building. pool on the roof. Yeah. Wow. And then right across the street, Dave, if you go back on the project, is is the Gale Hotel and Residences, and that's a that's I think a George a classic example. You literally these two buildings are are right adjacent to each other. Is that this one here? On. No, if you, oh. yeah, I think you need to go back to the portfolio. Yeah, um, I got it. And, okay. Uh, yeah. So on the right there. Yep. The, on the left. Yeah. So that that project again. Right. Now we're talking right across the street with smaller units. With modules that are you know 14 to 28 foot modules uh, in, right. in each of these apartments yep. uh, in here, and you've you've got a product that's a little bit less high end, um, but nonetheless, I mean, all about these you know beautiful uh, bathrooms, and you can see that there's a hotel at the ground. But if you look at this building, and then you, what you can do to really make things uh, you know, create that anomaly on the corner here with with, with the curve, just okay. really sets off the whole building, and the rest of the building is repetitive but stepped back and. Um, and, and even in the interiors, as we were saying before, you know, th this right here, there's no reason why these things and to get those tolerances between the woods and the marbles and the stones and, and the steel uh, is in a controlled environment is, you know, so much this better. Is, uh, this is a yeah. project that had uh, it had a a, um, a historical registration on the building. We had to preserve and design a building that had at least a flavor of being the mid-century modern uh, yep. Fort Lauderdale. And this is where uh, uh, also one of the things that uh, we we have the privilege of doing, which we don't do all the time, is um, we have been obviously an interior design department. And what's interesting is we do not know where our architecture ends and our interior design begins. Sometimes they really drive the ship. Sometimes we drive it architecturally. It's that right. integration that has also been extremely successful in many occasions that, that that's a, I mean, but again, we don't have to, but when we do, we, we take advantage of, of that opportunity. Yeah, for sure. For sure. 
Yeah, absolutely gorgeous. I mean, listen, uh, this is this is the way forward for sure, and you're thinking of the right way forward. And in a hotel like this, aesthetically, you know, for the most part, everything we build is rectangulars and boxes. It's how we dress it. It's what it's it's what we put on the panels, the rounded edges. Uh, you know, and it just really, really makes sense, especially in today's market and, uh, you know, everything that's going on with our with our with our labor pools and and, and so forth. There's 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 quality control here that that you get. There's like I said, less time on site. There's savings on uh, insurance and in the world of hospitality and multifamily heads on beds. Right. That's the whole oh, idea. To you get save it a month or two. Yeah. Yeah, and a month or two is a, is a lot of money. I don't know what the calculation. Somebody told me the calculation once on what it was for you know a head on a bed for every day or month. Between that and the rate, the 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 Rev Park formulas, uh, 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 the, the, which is all that they're relying upon, is those average rates are so crucial in the, in the payback. Right. And then uh, even if they're hotels that are just going into a, for, a portfolio for for we do a lot of work with large very big developers who right are their, their, their their five year hold programs and they 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 just it has to work this way yeah. and we uh, i don't think we can use the name but we've uh, been very complimented in occasions there where they take in a hotel and they they've spent on a renovation 75 million and sold it for you know four times that much right and they say well i guess your fee was worth it right and uh, uh that so they they realize that that we, we, the value we bring to it is because we think a lot more holistically than how can we make this a really nice looking building? That's again, that's just right. part of the equation. Yeah, for sure. You know, and that's another good point. You, you not only do you design and, and go through the entire build process on these buildings, but you've been doing it long enough now where you actually have clients that you have worked with having you come back because things outdate over time and they have you redoing the building again. So I always say we're a startup business every year without referrals. And everybody always thinks that you can't have referrals in the building business, right? For the most part, you know, because a lot of builders just build and go. Um, but that that's that's not what I'm hearing here. You you guys, you guys, this is a long term relationship when you get in with a client. And and I think it's because you do the right thing. And that's 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 amazing to, to see. We, we, we get ourselves into a little bit of a pickle <laughs> uh, sometimes because um, and, and, and we're in one or two now, which we're very proud of in a way. We have clients who come to us and then they discover that we know a little bit more than we let on when we first met and we, the, we, we were trying to sell them the value of working with us and what it is. And we become somewhat uh development consultants to them and, and then they begin to rely on us to do a, a bunch of things that we really don't do as primary for our business but we do do it anyway which is the knowledge about construction methods and means and about the how to promote that project better how to get it approved better we have a 100 approval rate on any project that we have ever entitled We do a lot of entitlement work from in all the in a bunch of communities all the way right. from Central America throughout Florida, and we have never failed to get a project entitled. And that is not bragging; it's just that we right. begin the process very early on. We know how to schmooze. We know who to have lunch with. We also know how to design. We also know what they're looking for, and we also know how to let the municipality right. become part of our design team. Well, you know, the, the, the proof's in the pudding, right? Like, and I'll, I'll just show it one more time. And, you know, I, I just, to, to, to have this as your portfolio on your site, and this is only the, 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 the one page, this, this is a testament to everything you're saying. People don't, people don't go back to, you know, back to the same person unless they're happy. People do not hire somebody like yourself unless there's real value on projects like this because it is a business decision for them. And I think uh, I, I think you guys are doing an outstanding job. And I, I think we're going to have you come back on. I, I, I think I want people to start asking you guys questions, start talking to you because we need we need your we need your minds in our in our offsite world. And I think uh, we bring talent in such as yourself that see this and understand it. We have talented people. 
but you do beautiful work artwork wise, right? The, the buildings look like art to me and that's, that's a big thing. So I, I, I really, really love it. I love it. I'm, in fact, I can't say I love it enough. Dave, Peter. if you go back, if, if you go back real quick to the screen you were just on, cause I think it, 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 it goes to just what you were saying. Um, right there on the, on the bottom, right. Um, the, uh, the, not, not, not the thin tower, um, right there on the, on the right hand side of the screen. Yeah. But right next to it, the, 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 the go up caddy corner 40, go straight up, straight up that project right there. If you click on that one, that's the, the AC Marriott in Fort Lauderdale. When we were working with, uh, OTO development on this project, uh, they were very interested in, uh, in, in right. off construction and this, so you, you take a look at this building and go through it. We had designed this building and the modules in this building to be completely offsite constructed. Um, and, and this is the result of, of the building. It, 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 it's, it, it's, it's being built right now. It, it, it did not end up going that way. The, the project sold. But the idea of what you had just mentioned uh, is exactly right because you take that and then you can skin it uh, in, a, in a certain way. Um, and that's what you can achieve. And it does not, you know, in, in any way, shape or form looks like a, a plug and play type of building. Yeah. I mean, this does not look like a plug and play. I'm just, you know, really looking at it. And the fact that this was designed with, uh, with offsite in mind, modular volumetric, uh, this is what I'm talking about. It, it, it's taking something that's simplified and beautifying it with, with, with aesthetics. I, I forgot. I have you know, that, completely forgotten yeah. that building was a product. Yeah. That's, of, that's of really the, kind of where, we, and we, we had sort of gotten a resurgence, George, and, and the podium of this building, the, uh, the idea of the construction, it was great because we brought in our structural engineers and we're working with, with different groups right. and, and the whole thing was going to be steel built above the podium. So we had this three story podium and then that could be done and fabricated. And the, and the, the as you mentioned earlier, this, the time savings alone, Bringing right. and get, getting that bar open for, you know, two months early is a tremendous revenue source <laughs> for, a, yeah. for a hotel. Definitely. Definitely. Well, listen, guys, I, I really appreciate you taking the time to come on today and, and, and tell us a little bit about the Garcia Stromberg story. I think uh, we're going to be seeing a little bit more of you and I'm looking forward to having you on a live show. You guys up for that? But Absolutely. It'll be a lot of fun. We'll get a lot of people are going to ask a lot of questions. I think uh, I think what you guys are doing is absolutely amazing. There's a lot of people out there that are going to want to see what you're doing and see how you're going to, in, to incorporate your ideas, your thoughts, your designs into the offsite community. And and we look forward to having you as part of it. So thank you so much. Thank, thank you Dave. so much for having us. Yeah, for sure. For sure. All right, everybody. This is Dave Cooper. And this was uh, Dave Cooper dot live. And we had uh, George Garcia and Peter Stromberg on from Garcia Stromberg Architects. Love it. And I think it was also uh, GS4 Studios. So yep. you guys are awesome. And I can see why people work with you. I'm Dave Cooper. We'll see you next time.